She's a brassy comedian who can handle melodrama in a pinch. Mae West with a pinch of Joan Crawford and a dash of Barbara Streisand. Bette Midler is the divine Miss M on this edition of Hollywood Stars. All I know about are aging stars, hopeful hookers, and people hopping pills and winding up in the gutter. You wouldn't use real names, would you? But enough about me, let's talk about you. What do you think of me? Bette Midler is not your average superstar. Her movies make millions, her Broadway shows break the box office, and there are at least three generations of fans who could easily recite the lyrics to her songs. Totally uninhibited on stage, Bette Midler is in a class all of her own. She's just an incredible, huge, philosophical, smart, brassy, outrageous, grand dame in her own life. Working with Bette, you learn a whole new side to life that you never knew about before. Working with Bette is great. I'm an icon and, and, and to millions and millions of young people. And as far as they're concerned, I never did anything wrong. Nice. Because I am divine. On December the 1st, 1945, on the big island of Hawaii, Ruth Midler would give birth to her third and last daughter. She named her after one of the biggest actresses of her time, Betty Davis. But she was mistaken in thinking that the E at the end of her name was silent. Early life was tough for the young Bette Midler, having to deal with a relatively impoverished family. Plus, Bette was the only Caucasian child in her class, often making her the object of ridicule by other students. Even though times were tough, she still has beautiful memories of her homeland. We do our pretend hulas because neither one of us are really uh, hula dancers, but we, we really do love it. It's a beautiful place. and it's, I think it's the most beautiful place in the entire world. I really do. I've been all around the world, and I was so happy to come back there. When I got back, I said, oh, thank you for giving me back my, my islands. When Bette won first place in her sixth grade talent competition, things changed. She was awarded just two dollars for the honor, but the confidence she gained was invaluable. In high school, Bette climbed the social hierarchy by getting elected as senior class president, winning a statewide championship for dramatic speaking, and eventually becoming class valedictorian. After high school, Bette went on to work in a local pineapple cannery, inspecting the fruit slices in an assembly line. Bette said the work was sickening, but she needed the money. She used her earnings to get an apartment of her own so she could see her boyfriend without her father's interference. As a member of the only Jewish family in a low-income Hawaiian neighborhood, Bette learned quickly how to adapt to the intense spirituality of the islands. It's full of spirits, absolutely chock full of spirits, and it's full of people who believe in the spirits. So you cannot be too careful there. You must never offend the spirits. I was at a big uh, hula convention one year on the big island of Hawaii, and we were in an amphitheater, and uh, a, a group of uh, uh, hula dancers refused to dance this one chant because they said it was offensive to the gods and that, the, uh, that everyone should take care. And as soon as they left the stage, the thunder began, the lightning began, the rain began, and the lights went out in the arena. And we sat there in the dark, and that was the end of the concert. Bette landed her first professional acting gig as a seasick missionary wife in the movie Hawaii. It was a small speaking part, but Bette's lines were cut from the final film. In 1966, Bette arrived in the Big Apple, ready to take over Broadway. But it was more of a challenge than she had anticipated. Bette lived in a seedy hotel and worked as a go-go dancer in New Jersey. Other jobs she held during this time included a typist for the university, a sales clerk in the glove section of the department store, and a hat check girl in a local restaurant. After months of auditioning, Bette broke into Broadway with a chorus girl role in Fiddler on the Roof. But Bette still craved a spotlight of her own. I want to congratulate you for winning the Tony. Did you see those three other broads smashing their teeth? Ha <laughs> ha, it was great, wasn't it? Her launch pad for superstardom was a venue no one would expect for a woman, the Continental Baths, a gay man's bathhouse. But eventually, the buzz surrounding Bette was so great, people of all sexual preferences were showing up just to catch a glimpse of the bathhouse Betty. In 1972, she held a sold-out concert in New York's Lincoln Center. Bette and her entourage planted marijuana joints under all the seats in the venue, but it was a surprise that would eventually be quashed by the police. 
1984, Bette married ex-commodities broker Martin von Hasselberg. Two years later, they had their first and only child, a daughter named Sophie. At this time, Bette realized that her life in the limelight would have to change. You have to be careful, absolutely. You have no past when you are a mom. But Bette still had a future. Even raising a family didn't slow down her rise to the top. Her albums were reaching platinum status, and she was starring in movies opposite some of Hollywood's biggest heavyweights. I told Dave you'll catch AIDS or plague or, or herpes. Oh, my God. In 1986, Bette hit it big with the comedy Down and Out in Beverly Hills with Richard Dreyfuss and Nick Nolte. It earned Bette a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress and the movie placed in the top ten of that year. He's going to give that dog fleas. <laughs> That same year, she also scored with ruthless people playing a hostage victim who nobody wants back. When do I get out of here? Well, as soon as Mr. Stone pays the ransom. Well, what's the problem? What is the ransom? It... it was $500,000. That shouldn't be a problem. He complained. In 1987, Bette starred opposite Shelley Long in the comedy Outrageous Fortune. The two played struggling actresses who fall for the same guy, only to discover that he's a con man. This girl does not have one night stands. Every guy I have ever slept with, and we are way into double digits here, has come back for more. Every single one. You're going to be my partner. 1988 was another breakthrough year for Bette, as she teamed with Barbara Hershey for the legendary tearjerker Beaches. You did everything you said you were going to do. Everything! You're smart. Beautiful. You have hair that moves. The movie was a hit, as was the song Wind Beneath My Wings, which went on to win Record of the Year and Song of the Year at the Grammys. Even today, it still remains a fan favourite. Wind Beneath My Wings. No, it's actually neck and neck with the rose. People really love the rose. But when it came to performing at the Oscars, Bet said thanks, but no thanks. You sing at the Oscars? No. Because if you fail, a billion people see you, and if you win, if you don't, uh, if you don't fail, nobody remembers two weeks from then. So it's, it's not, it's can't win. You yo-yos clear out, and I mean now. Bet's claws came out for Disney in the 1988 cartoon Oliver and Company with Billy Joel. That same year, she starred in the comedy Big Business with Lily Tomlin, playing a mismatched set of twins. Rose, look at this. Red wine and cheeses of the world. Oh, and look, real wooden hangers. But they don't come off. I made his reservations to eat at the Windsor Room. I'm sorry, I can't go. I've got a date with Jim up to Grove tonight. In 1990, Bette starred in Stella, a remake of Barbara Stanwyck's character Stella Dallas. She played a poor single mum who selflessly decides to send her daughter away to live with her wealthy father. Don't disappear, Bet returns when Hollywood Stars continues. I'm having an affair. Mm -hmm. Sex was incredible. The man was insatiable. I need an aspirin. I gotta get an aspirin. In 1991, Seen from a Mall should have been a rip roaring success, considering it combined the talents of the divine Miss M and the legendary Woody Allen. But it turned out to be a box office disappointment. Why did I ever have children with anyone as shallow as you? It's a very sick woman, folks. Did she do tricks and bad things I don't do? No, no. Yes, actually, she did. If you knew how many years I've been dying to tell you what I really think of you, I could say some very ugly things. Oh, yeah? Too. Like what? The two of you are going to be bigger than Burns and Allen, bigger than Hope and Crosby. Bette received her second Best Actress nomination for 1991's For the Boys, playing a USO singer who entertains the troops for over 40 years. You just let me teach you and nothing will stop us. We'll be bigger than, be bigger than all of them. So tell me about this career place. It's a tropical paradise. On behalf of our fighting men and women everywhere, you're doing a magnificent job. 